Thanks to those of you who have checked out my Patreon, I am able to make a new series of Pokemon Epics. And a big shout out, of course, to the Nerd Therapist and Wilgrim. Hello, Pokemon Master. My name is Berkey Batobi, and thank you for clicking on this video. What if Celebi was good? Like, really good? Like, so much better than it is currently in the games? What if I recognize that October of 2019, where we are right now as of uploading this video, is the 20th anniversary of the website Cerebi.net? that my friend Joe has been running pretty much single-handedly for 20 years. It has been the ultimate resource of Pokemon, and that's why I wanted to dedicate this episode of Make It Better to Celebi. Celebi.net, happy birthday, you are absolutely perfect. But Celebi, the Pokemon that your name is, of course, inspired by, um, that Pokemon's implementation into the games has not historically been so good. In fact, I imagine the board meeting for Pokemon Cold and Silver went something like this. Jinichi Masuda is of course standing there and he's like, Hello everyone, we're going to set Pokemon Gold and Silver in the future of Pokemon Red and Blue. And we're going to have a time travel Pokemon, Celebi. And I'm there because I've obviously been hired by Game Freaks for my talents. And I'm thinking, Jinichi, dude, that is awesome. A time travel Pokemon and the game is set in the future. Are we going to be traveling back to the past of Kanto and interacting with Red as Gold and doing lots of time travel shenanigans? And Junichi Masuda is just like, no, we're not going to have Celebi in the game at all, pretty much. No, you know what? I am a creative at Game Freak. This is my opportunity to write the story of Celebi. And you know what? If you're watching, I want to hear in the comments how you would make Celebi even better and incorporate it into the lore of the games and the world of the games even better. While you're down there in the comment section, you might as well drop a like, because if you don't, my Snorlax is going to sit on you. Oh, you can barely, you can barely see him. He's very threatening. Snorlax. So, Celebi, a Johto Pokemon, and it is an event Pokemon, a mythical Pokemon that typically you've never been able to get in the games. I think possibly there's a Japanese bonus disc for Pokemon Coliseum where you can get Celebi as a download, but downloads aren't exactly in-depth lore. And in the Pokemon Virtual Console version of Crystal, there is a special in-game event that allows you to get Celebi after you've completed the Pokemon League. You get the GS ball from uh, Professor Elm or Kurt, and then you go into the Elix Forest, you uh, interact with the Shrine, and you are able to catch Celebi. Actually, I tell a lie, if you did have a special event Celebi, then you could go to the Elix Shrine in Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver, and you get to go back in time and see Giovanni. After the fall of Team Rocket, getting ready to return, and of course you defeat him. And that stuff is really, really interesting. But you know what? I think, I think I can write one better. Celebi, what do we know about it? One, it is the guardian of the forest. Two, it is a time-traveling bug psychic, no, grass psychic, ah. This is like when I called Dunsparce a ground type all over again. Uh, the grass psychic. And, and almost specifically within the lore of Pokemon Colosseum, there is this item called the Time Flute, which allows you to purify a Pokemon, and Celebi has some connection to the Agate Shrine, where it can purify shadow Pokemon. So, you know, there's that. That's all pretty interesting. Also, within the arc of the Pokemon animated series and the movies, in the Orange Islands, Ash is given a very special Pokeball called the GS Ball, the Gold Silver Ball. And this ball was meant to contain Celebi. He had to take it from the Orange Islands to Professor Oak, who then sent it off to Kurt, the Pokeball maker. Kurt creates Pokeballs out of Apricorns and is supposedly the first person to make the modern day Pokeball. And then Celebi just got dropped out of the plot. This because the Pokemon movie Forever came out and had its own story about Celebi in a forest which was probably inspired by the Ilix forest. And that movie showed off Pokemon poachers and hunters and a special member of Team Rocket who had a Tyranitar, the Iron Mask Marauder, and Suicune was in the movie. So, we've got lots to work with here, and what I want to imagine is that you're playing Pokemon Gold, Silver, Crystal, Heart Gold, or Soul Silver. This is the games that we're going to be looking at putting Celebi in. And just like the virtual console copy of Crystal, you will have to beat the Elite Four, but I reckon you've got to do even more than that. See, I'm thinking Professor Oak has to be tied into this story because in the Pokemon movie Forever, we meet a young Professor Oak. And Pallet Town in the game's Gold, Silver, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, Crystal, Pallet Town is one of the last locations that you visit because famously you can revisit Kanto after you get through Johto. And I think that leads to some pretty interesting scenarios, especially because Professor Oak is the person who made the Pokedex, which you started your journey for Professor Elm, filling out and doing all that stuff. So, you've beaten the Elite Four, 
you've beaten the champion. You don't necessarily need to have defeated Red at this point, but what you definitely need to have done is seen every Pokemon in the Pokedex to access this other than Celebi or Mew, the other mythical Pokemon from, of course, Generation 1. So you go to Part Town, you go to Oak's Lab, you meet Professor Oak, you've beaten the champion, and he's all like, Oh my jolly good old chap, I don't know why he's British. Well done, I sent some Pokemon trainers on a journey a few years ago and they could only see 150 Pokemon, you've seen so many more. Hurrah, hurrah. I gotta, I gotta stop with the accent, it's awful. Professor Oak tells you to give Professor Elm his regards next time you're in Johto. And actually, if you're going to Johto, well, I've got this interesting Pokeball. I don't suppose you could take it to my friend Kurt in Azalea Town. And of course, what Oak is referencing to is the GS Ball. So you take the GS Ball as an item. It's like it's a very interesting, one-of-a-kind Pokeball, and you take it to Kurt. You go to Azalea Town, you go into Kurt's house, and of course, guess who isn't home? Well, it's Kurt. He is in the Ilix Forest, and his granddaughter says like, oh, he's in the Ilix Forest meditating by the shrine. If you're gonna go there, make sure you don't have any like really powerful Pokemon that are gonna just like disturb the nature around. So no high level Pokemon, no legendary Pokemon. Maybe there's even a level cap on this event, like level 50 or level 30 or something. And you go out and you talk to Kurt. If you don't have the right requirements in your party, he will say, you can't bring those powerful Pokemon near here. We are meditating, if you want to join me, come back later. So you join him, you've met the requirements, and you show him the GS ball, and he's like, oh yes, of course, I remember this. Oak had a very interesting story about this Pokeball. Kurt talks about how Pokeballs in the past used to be a lot less effective than Monday's Pokeballs, and it was his work with Apricorns that kind of made that happen. And in fact, in trade for the GS balls, he gives you 10 regular Pokeballs. And that's gonna become important later. He talks about how in the past there used to be other kinds of Pokeballs, but they weren't as effective as modern day Pokeballs. He's gonna take the GS ball back to his hut and you should join him if you're interested in finding out more about the GS ball. Kurt walks off, but at that moment, the Pokemon Celebi appears in front of you. Kurt is long gone when Celebi uses the voice of the forest. It's ability that, that is the song that in the movie sends our characters back in time and there is a flash. You get to the other side of the flash and you are still in Elix Forest, but things are a little bit different. You can't go down to Azalea Town. Your path is blocked off by overgrown trees. It's like the layout is slightly different. Of course, you've traveled back in time. So instead of heading south, because you can't, you head north through the forest and you battle a number of wild Pokemon. And while walking around the forest, you encounter Pokemon poachers, trainers who have Houndooms and Scythers like that Pokemon poacher in the movie. And these guys are bad news. They are trying to catch Pokemon in nets and other illegal contraptions. Their Pokeballs are very different to your Pokeballs. And in fact, after you beat them in battle, they show dialogue tools showing interest in your Pokeballs and being like, huh, that seems really cool. I wonder if I could, if I had a team of strong Pokemon still, I'd beat you and I would take those Pokeballs. Because you know, everything in Pokemon is sorted by Pokemon battles, not fist fights. But you make your way through the Ilix Forest and at the end you meet a young Pokemon trainer, a young Professor Oak. And yeah, our young Samuel Oak, he's battled with you and he's kind of like, look, those Pokeballs look really good. These uh, Pokemon Poachers have been terrorizing the Johto region lately. You need to maybe not have those Pokeballs out. You're just gonna weird people out. You look very different. You look like you don't belong. You keep heading north and there are trainers on the route north of Ilix Forest, but uh, every time you encounter one, they run up to you, they cross eyes with you and they're like, hey, are you ready for a Pokemon battle? What's that? You won't battle with me? Fine, you look weird anyway. Why are you dressed so funny? and they just leave you alone. Then of course you keep heading north and you find yourself in Goldenrod City. The city is very, very different. The Mega Mart is just a regular sized shop. There are way less houses. This whole area, it's far more harbor-like, kind of like Olivine City. And in fact, the Goldenrod Tower isn't even complete yet, the radio tower. Instead, if you talk around with NPCs, they'll talk about how there used to be a tower here that a legendary Pokemon roosted on and that the tower got destroyed and they're now building there a radio tower. Isn't that cool? As you talk to the NPCs, you learn more about the world that you're in, that there are these people, kind of poachers and thieves that are terrorizing the Johto region right now. Everyone's kind of a little bit scared that something bad might happen. And Oak has kind of separated from you and you bump back into him and he's talking to a young Kurt. They're just kind of crossing paths. Uh, Kurt is going to get through into Elix Forest. He wants to cut down the trees and make a nice route through to Azalea Town. He's going to be responsible for doing that. And he's leaving in that direction because apparently there's rummagings of something bad happening in Ecritique City and he wants to get out of there. Oak, of course, has a different philosophy. With you, we're going to head north. 
you've got to get right into the thick of the action and you appear upon the area that is at this point in time, maybe 40, 50 years ago, just a kind of patch of grass and trees. It is not the national park yet. And in this little time travel segment, this is the as much of the Johto region as we're going to explore. As you get there, the sky starts glowing red. Maybe there's a little bit of a cutscene, and we see in the distance the Equitique Tower burning. This is that day. Now, depending on which bit of Pokemon lore you follow, whether it's the games or Pokemon Origins or the TV show, the Equity Tower either burnt because luck lightning struck it or because people burnt it down. What we see and learn from NPCs is that there are Pokemon poachers and thieves. They've attacked Equity City. They're burning down the tower and Goldenrod City will probably be next. What's even worse is embers from the fire have started lighting up the park around you. All of the trees are starting to burning and the wild Pokemon are at risk. Oak says that him and the other NPCs are going to focus on putting those fires out, but you have to save the wild Pokemon. You have these cool Pokeballs that seem to be really effective. He's just going to tell the people that you came from another region, that, and that's where your cool Pokeballs are, but you are the only one who can do it. And you do what is essentially the first ever bug catching contest, except in a time of dire need. You go around and you use your 10 Pokeballs that you've been given to catch one of each of the bugs in the park. The Weedle line, Caterpie line, Pinsa, and Cypher, you have to catch all of them to save them. You notice while you're traveling around the park that there's a little shrine, much like the one that you saw previously in Ilix Forest here in the park. This area used to be forest land. And well done, you've saved all the Pokemon. But at that moment, the head poacher, the head honcho appears and he's got all the Pokemon that the Iron Master Marauder had on his team. This guy is bad news and him and his other Pokemon poacher friends gloat about how lightning will be blamed, but really it was because of him that the tower is now burning down. For whatever reason, this guy is just pure evil and it's going to be up to you to battle him with your future Pokemon and take him on and win, which of course you do. But because of the distraction, Oak and the other NPCs weren't able to put out the fire and they think whatever will they do. And at that moment, a blur of yellow shoots past you, a blur of red and then a blur of blue. A rainstorm starts and all the fires are put out. And with that, the legendary Pokemon Suicune appears. Sure enough, these three Pokemon have just been born in the city to the north, Ecritique City. Suicune's reign has just put out all the fires and now they have fled south and they are passing by you. Suicune disappears and Professor Oak talks about how the Pokemon is something he's never ever seen before. How just one minute there was a fire and then a chilly north wind just put everything out. Of course, the North Wind is the thing that they call Suicune in the fourth Pokemon movie, and it makes sense here because Ecritique is in the North. A young Professor Oak finds today's events to be incredibly amazing. You've managed to help with the takedown and arrest of the lead Pokemon poacher. The Ecritique Tower has burnt down. This national park area is going to need rebuilding. And strangest of all is you, the trainer character. Who are you? Where have you come from with these odd Pokeballs? He turns away from you for just a moment. You are stood by the nearby burnt down shrine that is like the one in Ilix Forest. And Celebi reappears and takes you back to the future. Oh, that was cringe. You could really feel the cringe. I had to say it though. You appear in what is now today the National Park and someone sees you teleport in and they go, oh, did you just teleport with an Abra or something? That was weird. You just sort of appeared out of nowhere. Haha, <laughs> well, world of Pokemon sure is strange. And with that, you're left wondering what on earth went on. You head back down south, everything just looks like regular Pokemon map. You head through Illich Forest, nothing happens when you interact with the shrine, and you go and see Kurt again. Kurt kind of wonders what's been taking you so long and said, I thought you were just in the Illich Forest. You've been off traveling around the rest of the Johto. Anyway, let me tell you about the GS ball. He tells you about his friend, Professor Oak, a trainer that he knew when he was younger. He talks about how Professor Oak claimed to have seen a Pokemon trainer from another region with these really weird looking Pokeballs. When Oak drew them, he drew Pokeballs that were kind of, you know, one half red, one half uh, white. Although Oak always said they would look better as gold and silver. And he created this prototype ball, the GS ball. And this Pokeball is so fascinating, it doesn't open anymore. And the reason behind that, the big secret, of course, the reason it doesn't open is because it doesn't work. 
It's a prototype, it's a proxy, it's the first Pokeball, it just, it doesn't work. Sorry, you thought Celebi was gonna be inside? No, there's no Pokemon inside. It is a dud Pokeball, but it is one of a kind. It is a relic of a time gone by. And in many ways, because the idea was inspired by something that the Professor Oak saw on a very uh, important day for the Johto region, he thinks this Pokeball is like a relic at the center of it all. Why don't you have it? There are so many events in history that are attached to this specific item, so you take it, and now, when you take it to the Ilix Forest and to the Shrine, Celebi will return. And you, with your team of Pokemon, will finally get the chance to battle and catch Celebi. But that's just my idea. That is how I think you could improve the story of Celebi without even really having Celebi in it much. See, here's the thing. Raikou, Entei, and Suicune are very attached to the lore of the Johto region, as is ho and as is Lugia. Celebi at this point kind of isn't. And I think this is a cool way to connect it to the region, connect it to all of its lore points in the Pokemon 4th movie, and kind of the little bit of Suicune edition, like that's kind of like how they know each other, maybe? The idea that the National Park used to be a little bit of forest, and of course Celebi is the protector of the forest, and it had a shrine there, and that shrine was later moved to Ilex Forest, it combines the backstory of Kerr and Oak, which we don't really know, and the GS ball, and it puts it all together, for me, in a story that I think is quite satisfying. But you have to let me know, of course, what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching this video, and of course, so high, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you 